Hey guys, it's Allie, and happy official Mockingjay Part 1 release day! So in honor of the official first day of Mockingjay Part 1 being in theaters, I thought I'd share a little story with you and discuss the movie. I've already seen it, what? So a few months ago, I got the greatest surprise in the world, and that was that I got to take my best friend and go to Los Angeles for the Hollywood premiere of Mockingjay Part 1, and that was just this past Monday, and that was one of the most amazing things. So here, I thought I'd share with you guys my ticket. See, super official. It was at LA Live, unfortunately, I didn't have red carpet access, but that's okay because I could see the red carpet, or white carpet in this case, from the window of the theater, and I saw Jennifer Lawrence, Sam Claflin, um, Je Jenna Malone, Donald Sutherland, all of them, Josh Hutcherson, Liam Hemsworth, all of them. So that was pretty cool. And then I we went into the theater, we got our seats, and Francis Lawrence, people of Lionsgate, and the producer Nina Jacobson came out and introduced the whole cast. They were all out on the stage, and it was super cool. And then we sat for the screening, and I will come back and talk about the movie later. Then after that, I got the crazy awesome honor to be able to actually go to the official after party. That was crazy. Um, <laughs> the only downfall to this story, this, this is a very sad part of this story, is my friend and I, when we were looking at the invitation to the premiere, we saw that cell phones were allowed, but you had to check them and it would take, in bold and all caps, an extremely long time to get them back, so... Well, we didn't take them because we're like, oh, we're real smart. Like, we're not gonna have to wait in lines. Like, we won't have our phones. Yes. Well, um, come the after party and, uh, you can, you know, you're at a party and the whole cast is there, the director, everything, and everyone's out taking phones and they're taking pictures and we're all like, ha, wow, we can take pictures with none of them. So anyways, all I have are my memories, but they're wonderful memories, so it's great. It's fine. I'm over it. Basically, it was incredible. This party, it was, I mean, they spared no expense. It was so nice. I, it was crazy. There were several times when I sat down and turned around and there was Natalie Dormer looking drop-dead gorgeous and perfect. Being an avid Tudors fan, I not only freaked out because she was in Mockingjay's Cressida, but she was also Anne Boleyn in the Tudors and very good at it, might I add. And then I also saw Elizabeth Banks sitting down over there and then I was walking with my cheesecake bite, which was so good. And right in front of me walks Donald Sutherland, casually. And you know, then we saw Jenna Malone and she was right in front of us looking perfect in this super long red gown. I the point is, oh, I also saw Francis Lawrence. I walked by him and um, anyway, so the point was it, was, it was amazing, it was surreal. It was such a wonderful opportunity and I'm so glad I got to go, whether I had my phone or not. And now I just wanna take a little bit of time and do a quick review slash discussion of Mockingjay part one. So if you haven't seen the movie, I would go, um, go watch it. It's super great and really satisfying. <laughs> a little bit depressing, but if you've read the book, you already know that. So bye if you haven't seen the movie. Bye! So Mockingjay Part 1 was still a Hunger Games movie, but it is a very different kind of Hunger Games movie, mainly be because there is no games. They are now getting into the bulk of the revolution. This is what this whole movie is about, and I just thought that it, it was just executed so wonderfully. I love how bleak and more political this movie was. I thought it just, it was a seamless transition, and I thought Catching Fire being one of the best book-to-movie adaptations I've ever seen was a great setup for this, and just the way Mockingjay was executed. I mean, the cast was incredible. We have some new additions, like Natalie Dormer, who was awesome as Cressida, and Julianne Moore, as coin perfect like to a t how i imagined her not like physically how i imagined her when i was reading the book no but the persona was there and i i loved all the the scenes with uh katniss and coin because you could sense the tension there so it'll make sense when um we all know if unless you haven't read the books but i mean <laughs> read them then we all that tension um it sets it perfectly for what we know will ultimately happen in part two when katniss 
shoots coin. I love that Effie was in it because we know in the book, she is in the book, but at the very, very end, she's not in it much at all because she's imprisoned. Um, and I like Effie's, Effie's being there because I think it added just a some needed lightness to the film and some good comic relief and I love she's she's the most flamboyant character still in the series and I just loved having her there I thought she was a very good ad addition I also really thought Liam Hemsworth did a good job he's never really had the chance to do a good job in any of these films because he's really hardly in it for most of the time and I mean I prefer PETA but I I think it was good to finally get to see Liam's, Liam Hemsworth get more involved in the production and I liked that we got to see more of Katniss and um, Gail's relationship in this one because we never really have before. Um, let me just say all the props in the world to Jennifer Lawrence. She does so much with everything she does. There's such an honest, real persona that she gives off and her I mean she is the most ideal Katniss she's incredible and she did she's done such justice with this role and this movie she shines even more in a different way I like how a lot of this movie focused around on the propaganda I thought they would dial that back down for the movie because it isn't as exciting or but I think it is a necessary part of the story you know it shows it's really kind of deconstruction of what a rebellion really is and what goes into it and really a deconstruction of what a hero or a face of the rebellion really what does it mean to be a hero like it isn't just running around and looking great all the time like granted she looks great when she's filming the propagandas but there's so many other things and we get to see the toll the games and her life has taken on Katniss and and Jennifer Lawrence just shows that with such grace one of my my favorite scene I don't know why was the opening scene we see Katniss she's like rocking to herself and she's like I'm Katniss Everdeen they took PETA and all this stuff and then she goes down and sees Finnick and Finnick's like tying knots compulsively and like He's like talking about how Annie was taken by the capital as well. And he's like, I wish she was dead. I wish we were all dead too. And then Black and then Mockingjay part one. So, so good. It sets up that bleak, dismal tone perfectly. And it may be kind of dark and depressing, but I just think it fits so well. And it was just perfectly executed. Um, bringing me to another point, Finnick loved him in this movie. I love that we get to see the more damaged, broken side of him because we see, you know, the flashy, charming side of him in Catching Fire and we really get to see his weaknesses in this one and what makes him him. PETA. That was a very depressing aspect of this movie for me. I will admit that I thought Katniss kind of dwelled on PETA a little bit too much in this movie, which was kind of... Sometimes it was like, okay, you have so many other things you could be thinking about right now. So that was a few times I was kind of not happy with that. But overall, I thought the whole PETA plotline was really depressing and... Oh, and But I think it gives uh, Joss Hutcherson some new interesting material to play around with because usually PETA's just so sweet and happy and everyone loves him and nothing's wrong. But this gives him some more... Um, things to go into as an actor so that's also fun for a uh, viewer to see and I thought this the visual effects with PETA making him look more emaciated as each time we saw him on video that was done really well it looked really realistic and then the scene when he tries to strangle her spot on just how I would um, have thought it was gonna go somewhat shocking like when he just uh, they were just staring at each other and then all of a sudden he just jumps and I was like <laughs> <laughs> it was like really intense um, but I dug it did you guys think it was gonna end that way because I definitely had a feeling I thought I mean it makes sense now we're in a really good place for part two to start out and um, going off of that we only see Joanna for like two seconds in this movie which was a bummer because Joanna is one of my like top three favorite characters but in those two seconds you just see her personality shine through and you're like yes Joanna and another thing, Finnick and Annie in that same scene, so, so adorable. Anyway, so overall, I really liked Mockingjay Part 1. It was points a little slower than I wanted, but on the whole, it was bleak, dismal, political, everything I had hoped out of Mockingjay, and I think it's a great, perfect setup for Part 2, which I'm super excited for, even if I have to wait another year. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep on reading, guys. Bye!